course is progressing nicely. You have noticed by now that the material has changed a little bit in nature since we finished the midterm. We're now focusing more on the traditional topics that are covered in the linear algebra course, but we can do so rather quickly because we laid a very solid foundation. What we will talk about this week is how to uh, look at systems of linear equations when they are underdetermined and how to then extract all possible solutions from those systems of linear equations. And finally, how to describe the infinite number of solutions with a finite number of vectors so that uh, if I ask on the exam, give me all possible solutions, uh, you don't have to sit there forever trying to find all of the infinite number of solutions that exist. I think you'll like the way we do this. In the opener, you're going to walk through a set of equations that has to do with how to visualize intersecting planes. And as you do those exercises, I'm going to illustrate uh, with a uh, animation what the solutions exactly mean that you have just computed. So join me for week 11. What we're going to do in this opener is help you visualize the solution uh, of a system with three equations three and th in three unknowns. And the example we're going to use is from the opener for week nine. Remember that back then we were trying to fit a second degree polynomial to three points and this led to three equations in three unknowns. And the solution to that system of linear equations turned out to be the coefficients of the second degree polynomial. The solution happened to be 2, 1, minus uh, 0.25. And what's going to be really important later in this unit is the fact that even if you just look at these equations individually, that particular solution is a solution to the individual equations as well as solving all of the equations simultaneously. What you learned a little bit last week, and what you're going to learn a lot about this week, is the fact that if you have one equation in three unknowns, then there is one dependent variable, and the other variables are free variables, and you can choose the free variables to have any value you want, and once you choose those two, then the dependent variable is determined by the equation. And that is then going to lead to a plane of solutions to this equation as opposed to a single solution. So you have an infinite number of solutions. And how do we find all of those solutions and describe them? Well, we're going to lead you through some examples. And then actually it is later this week that we're going to really tidy this all up. But let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find a specific solution that solves this one equation. Now, you have two free variables. You can choose them to have any value you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose them to be zero for the simple reason that it's really easy to compute with zeros. So if we plug in those zeros into the equation, then it's easy to see that chi zero is equal to minus one. So then a specific solution to this equation is the vector minus one, zero, zero. How can we visualize that? Well, here we have our coordinate system and notice that the thick vector points from the origin to a point in space that solves this linear system. And the linear system, of course, in this case is just one equation. So what we want to do next is we want to find vectors that map to zero that satisfy the equation except that we have replaced the right hand side with a zero. And how do we do that? Well, we still have our dependent variable and our free variables. And what we want to do now is first pick the, the first free variable to be equal to one, that's right here, and the second free variable to be zero. And once we've picked those, we can solve for the dependent variable. Now the free variables can be chosen any way you want, we don't want to choose both of them to equal zero because if we choose uh, chi one to be zero and chi two to be zero, then chi zero is also zero and the zero, zero, zero vector is just not an interesting solution to this. We want vectors that are not the zero vector. So if you pick one of them to be one, that's convenient. Pick the other one to be zero, that's convenient. 
and then we can solve for the third one and then we can get another vector by setting the first free variable to zero and the second free variable to e equal to one and if we do that for the first one um, then we get this solution right here where if we substitute in one for chi one zero for chi two then we can solve for chi zero and then we can do the same thing we can set the second free variable to one we can get this equation right here solve for chi zero and we end up with two vectors that we're going to later see are linearly independent that's a term that you're going to learn about this week for now just think of these as two vectors that don't point in the same direction it just suffices that we have these two vectors that map to zero and we can visualize these by plotting them and you notice that as we rotate these you notice that one vector is much longer than the other and the other somewhat annoying thing is that it sure would have been nice if these vectors happened to be perpendicular to each other we're later going to see that, that that's going to be very convenient now the general solution is equal to the specific solution plus any multiple of the first vector that maps to zero plus any scalar times the second vec vector that maps to zero here we show part of the plane that you get when you take linear combinations of the vectors that map to zero how did i plot this well this is actually a parallelogram and the corners are given by twice this vector twice that vector but in the opposite direction twice the blue vector twice the blue vector but in the opposite direction and notice that because this is not a square and because these vectors are not perpendicular to each other it's actually kind of hard to visualize what's going on here even as we rotate it now this visualizes the plane of vectors that map to zero because any linear combination of these two vectors maps to zero and notice that the specific solution to which you add a linear combination of those two vectors that map to zero any such vector also solves the equation well, what we have here is the pink which is part of the plane of points that map to zero and then we have the red plane which is that plane that maps to zero but now offset by the uh, specific solution let's stop this let's back it up a little bit and every once in a while you see that the red plane is simply the pink plane that has been moved by the specific solution so what does that mean that means that the red quadrilateral helps us visualize the plane of all solutions to this one equation in three unknowns we have a plane now if we made the vectors that map to zero perpendicular to each other then the quadrilateral or the parallelogram that we had becomes a square and everything just becomes much more pleasing to look at it becomes much easier to visualize so here we have a blue vector and a red vector both of which map to zero but they're now perpendicular to each other so they define the same plane as did the other vectors that we computed earlier and if we now start rotating this what you notice is that you just get a, a better sense as to what is going on because we know that we're dealing with a square that's rotating now you just get a better feel for it now how to take two vectors and create two vectors that are perpendicular to each other is the subject is a subject in week 11 so just be patient uh, just be patient and we'll have a look at that later if we stop this at just the right moment you definitely get this sense that it's a plane that went th through the origin that was the plane of all vectors that map to zero which later we're going to call the null space and that plane has now been shifted by the specific solution what i did here was recognize that one could actually have computed different specific solutions and the different specific solutions would have then shifted vectors in the null space the vectors that map to zero differently but 
if we go and we visualize now how these how the null space is shifted when you add a specific solution what you notice is that really they all lie in the same plane you're just pointing to a different point in the plane that represents all solutions to the one linear equation in three unknowns.